Hi, come on in, let me give you a tour. Let me show you my shop. This was our very first building. When I moved here back in 1986, I already had seven employees. This is where we did most of our manufacturing. There are two buildings here. They don't look anything now like they did at that time. We've replaced everything because we were in manufacturing. We had different equipment, different tooling, different power sources, different lighting sources. But for us in a school, I had to take that equipment and I had to change it into the kind of equipment that people could afford to buy in their home shops. So this is the building that we started the school in. There's about 6,000 square feet here. This is where our benches were actually right here where we're standing now. Again, as we've grown, we've changed things a little bit and we've moved and added a lot more equipment. And then as we've grown, we've changed from here to a bench room over here and we'll go look at that in a second. But the equipment that you see as we look around is set up so that we don't have any delays or any long waits and lines. In a five-day workshop, you can't have people coming in and having to wait for one piece of equipment. So in this room alone, we have five table saws, there are four planers, there are five joiners, there are six chop saws. I have no clue how many band saws are in here. Um, Mortising machines, you name it, it's all in here. And we've got it designed that way so that people just don't have to wait. Now there are some classes where we might have to do a specific setup on one machine that everybody has. So there could be lines there, but the rest of it, we just don't want people to lose valuable time. The way we're set up as well is we can do as many as six different classes a week. They all have their own independent buildings where that class would take place. So you could have a lot of people here that don't know that there are a lot of people here because they are self-contained in their area. So this is, is workshop one. And, and again, this is the machine room. Let me take you and show you the bench room for this. So this is still part of the first building. This is the bench room. Up here is where the instructor would be. We have TV cameras. We can zoom in on what's going on so students can sit here, watch what's going on, and then they could go back to one of their workbenches back here to work on whatever the technique was that they just learned. The instructor set up, he has a chalkboard, they have a slide a presentation, we have a sound system that people are hard of hearing so that, so that they can catch everything that's being said. So one of the really neat things here at the school is the personality of the walls. Over the years, people have given us a lot of things. Uh, instructors will make things that we get to put on collection so people can see what happened in certain classes. And, and I've been blessed to be able to have a lot of fine things that people do make uh, that I can display here to show people the talent that, that teaches here. So a lot of stuff on our walls is just a collection and a hodgepodge of a bunch of stuff. Some of it is from my father's collection. Some of it is stuff that my mom has given me. And again, it comes from a little bit of everywhere. Some very unique tools over here that uh, were made specifically for me. Uh, I have a hand plane made by Young Chan, which is really cool as well as a lot of things made by Tom Lee Nilsson and John Economaki. Uh, so there's just some fun things in this cabinet. Uh, in my cabinet over here, I have a, 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 a book that uh, it was really cool. It was, it was written by Graham Blackburn, and he dedicated the book to me. So I have a, that open up down here. I have a vessel down here that was made by Stephen Proctor, and it was 100% made on the table saw. And when you see that, you just sit there and go, that's impossible to do. But that's the talent of some of these people. This is our media center. And uh, one of the things you'll notice on the walls are all these uh, photographs that were taken in the early years of the school. Um, today, we do everything digitally, so we don't have to print out photos. But when we converted to all digital, I had all this big stack of photos. And we didn't know what to do with them, so we hung them on our walls in here. So if you were to see photos of me, I still have a full head of hair. Um, so they date back that long ago. But this is our media center. Uh, it's where we have our book collection with all of our books. It's also where we do our evening event where everybody comes and we gather around and instructors get to show their work and talk a little bit more about them and, and what they do for a living. It's also a place where people can come not only to do research but if they're doing design work we've got tables that we can set up for them to be able to spread out and be able to do all of the design work that they would like to do in here. It is, it's away from everything else, so it's not as noisy, it's not as dusty or as confusing as the other buildings are. So this is just simply a little resource area. One of the things that we have here is a lot of veneer. Indiana is the veneering capital of the world. We're like 15 miles from one of the largest veneer mills. 
And so for us, veneering is just a, a natural part of what we do. So we have an incredible collection of veneers here. There's an incredible collection of veneers that are more exotics and dyed and special veneers in another area. And in another building, we have a whole nother assortment of veneers like this. So whenever we do veneering classes, we've got a nice variety of species for students to be able to work with, to test, to play, to see how well it cuts and how hard it is to, to clean up and to sand and to glue. So now, let me show you this next room. This is workshop number two for us, and this is where workshops go on that are going to be what I consider to be non-aggressive. Now, when I say non-aggressive, I don't mean physically. I mean, this is a room where people typically don't have access to, to power equipment. So this would be an area where we might do carving classes, veneering classes, finishing classes, design classes, just where students don't need to use a lot of equipment. They, they basically can work at their bench all week long. Some of the things that are unique to this room or we still have up front a place where instructors have a, their own bench, TV cameras where we can zoom in on what's going on, padded seats for people to be able to sit around and watch, then they can come back to their workbench. If we're doing a finishing class, we have a spray booth here. We also have a special air filtration system to help take out or knock down a lot of the chemicals that are in the air. So we do what we can to keep people as safe as we can in this environment, especially when we've got finishing classes that go on. You can see that we've got a lot of nice examples from other workshops that have been done here over the years. You can see a lot of the work on the wall, but the thing that really is unique about this room and the others is you're gonna see all of these boards with all of these dovetails on them. Since the very first year of the school, I have kept the very first dovetail cut by people in my joinery class. And I'm proud to show off their very first joints. So every room in every building, you're going to see some plaque with a bunch of boards on it. And we have a sign that says, from the summer of. And it's kind of fun because when people come back, they always come back to the first year that they were here, the first year they took joinery, and they go find and revisit their joint, which is kind of a fun thing. Before we go into workshop number three, let me take you outside and show you something that's pretty cool out here. So out here is an area in the summer where we could come out and do sculptural work, or we could do blacksmithing, or we could do classes where you might be stripping furniture, where you don't want to be inside a building, but you need to be outside. We've got a canopy so that it'll protect you from the sun. We've got workbenches that can be beat up on, caught on fire, whatever we need to. And this becomes an actual working environment. But the thing that's really neat is we are in the middle of Tornado Alley. And one of the things I wanted to do to protect my students in case that were to happen here, is we have a tornado shelter that can handle an F5 category hurricane. It can handle 250 mile an hour winds, and we could put 100 people in there if we need to. So safety first across the board, and if something happens here weather-wise, we got you covered. This is building number three. We built this in 2002, so this is what I'm going to consider a a newer addition, the other facilities were the original facilities that were here. This room is like workshop one. It has its own bench room with its bench room. We have the area where the instructor would be. Again, we got the TV cameras. We have all of the media stuff behind to support whatever it is that they're trying to show or display or to teach at that moment. We've got the padded seats. We've got the work benches. And then this facility is supported by this tool room over here. So let me show you that tool room. This is the machine shop for workshop three. So we've had the first room, which was an aggressive room where a lot of power equipment and benches were at. We had the room where it was like for finishing workshops. It was non-aggressive. This again is the next facility. And again, this building, we usually take 16 to 18 people, depending upon the class and what we're making. They're completely independent of all other buildings. So we've got our bench room, which we just saw, and here's the machine room for it. So here, there's plenty of equipment to go with whatever it is that we're making. Let me show you our most important part of the school, and that's where the cafeteria is. This is our cafeteria area. Now, one of the things I like to do here is just kind of display the people who have completed their masters over the years. We've had about 400 people right now. This summer, we'll add about 30 more or so, 30 to 40 more. 
So we're going to be close to 440 by the end of this year. And this is a nice way to be able to recognize them by taking a photo and, and putting the year that they completed their masters. Our cafeteria can handle 100 people at one time. We prepare all of our own food here. On the other side of the wall, we have walk-in refrigerators, walk-in freezers, ovens, everything we need. Uh, my wife is the one who takes care of the meal program, which is a nice thing. We serve lunch over here, and lunch includes a hot meal every day, as well as an open fountain machine, coffee all day long. We set out snacks, and of course we have an ice cream machine. But since the school year hasn't quite started yet, it's not up and running right now. Else I would give you a full demonstration on how that thing works. Over the years, uh, my focus in woodworking has changed from making furniture to doing marquetry images. And so I've got a collection here of the marquetry images that I've made um, are of Mickey Mouse from 1928 to 1935 when he would start his cartoons. Each one of these images takes me one year to make. So uh, this is basically the last 15 years of my life have been focused on the marquetry work of making the posters that were in movie theaters announcing the upcoming Mickey Mouse cartoons. This is our turning center. Uh, this year we're going to do 27 different turning workshops, week-long workshops. It doesn't include our weekend workshops. We're equipped here with all one-way lathes. Every student has their own turning center. They have a place where they can store their tools. One of the things that's unique for us is that we also have two sit-down lathes so that if students can't stand all day or somebody's physically challenged, they have a, a lathe where they can sit and work at that lathe. In the center here, we have an area set up so that if after they get done turning, they want to embellish their work with painting or wood burning or whatever it might be, they can sit in this area and do that. The way we're set up here is the, instructor, the instructor's lathe is, is here. We've got the two TVs up here, the cameras. Students can sit around during the demos, watch everything that's going on. In this room, everybody has their own individualized dust collector, as well as we have uh, an air filtration system to make sure that, that uh, dust isn't a problem in case they're doing some sanding on turning. So this is a well-equipped room specifically designed for turning only. The next room is our tech room. Let me show you that. And this is our tech center. And we're set up differently here than we are in all of the other buildings. And the reason we're set up different here is because this is not a room where I intend to cut dovetails and build grandfather clocks. This is a room where I intend for students to be able to sit at a bench that's a completely different type of bench from the other rooms, where they can work on their computers or their laptops, send it through some of our magical systems here to whichever machine they want to send it to, where they can make the cuts. We do have enough equipment in here to be able to cut a piece of wood or mill a piece of metal. But ultimately, the goal is to be able to get it in one of our automated machines. We have lasers, we have CNC's, we have plasma cutters, and all of those things are driven by some kind of technology that's computer-based. So this is purely a tech center. And as, as we move forward in woodworking, we're finding that these type of workshops are really becoming popular. So for us, we're going to grow right into that too. Let me show you our CNC's. So one of the problems with CNC's is they're kind of loud. So what we've done is we've made just a little building uh, where we can move our CNC's into here so that when they're running we can have the doors closed so we don't have to hear the, the, the squeal of the routers. Uh, we do have some tech stuff set up in here right now. Uh, we have more CNC's, uh, but right now these are our two big main ones. We have a, a special air filtration system for these units when they run, uh, but this is just the CNC room. So this is our facility. We do have one more building, but we didn't make it over there today, and that's a building where we actually do glass blowing classes. We do a lot of metal fabrication classes. We also do a lot of workshops over there that are things that are ancillary to woodworking, like we've got a class this summer where we'll be making uh, kitchen knives. So that's the kind of stuff we do. We are more than a woodworking school. We're kind of a craft school with things that do focus specifically on um, probably things that would be applicable to a woodworker. This summer, we're going to have a lot of people here. We'd love to have you be one of them. Thank you.